Bergen Asylum, Jersey City, 1934. A young man by the name Sebastian Hall is led in by two policemen. He is just 12 years old and he have already killed his first man, Dr. Wendel, the founder and the director of the institute, wait at the lobby. Welcome, Sebastian. You are the first patient to arrive. I'm Dr. Wendell. The institute have just opened this very same day. Sebastian is led down into the cellar, where he is left for ten days, strapped to a cold metal table. Then the torture begins. Two years pass, and Sebastian have learned to love the pain. He's afraid that it one day will stop. And this is the day that his fear is for real, the first time. Dr. Wendell study him and says, What will we do today? What haven't we done? Maybe it's time for you to leave. I might need a new subject. Sebastian starts to cry. Because the torture might be over, he doesn't want it to stop. A shadow comes up behind Dr. Wendell. A man. It's too dark to see his face. He puts his hand on Dr. Wendell's shoulder and says, Don't worry, young Sebastian Hall. My name is Anatoly, and the angel is here to save you. Then he snaps the doctor's neck, and Wendell falls down dead. Oliver and Francis, Dr. Jensen have just told you that you are going into the tanks. You are in the recreation room at the asylum, and there are two orderlies behind you. They help you up and start to lead you away behind Dr. Eric Jensen. You are very drowsy and you feel a bit ill. It's hard to walk, and the orderlies have to hold you up. Dr. Jensen talk all the time, but you hear nothing of what he says. The both of you look at the windows as you pass them by. Outside you see a dark iron wall. The wall is just outside, maybe arm's length away from the window. The park, the sun and the outside is gone. But other patients sit by the windows, as if they saw the outside the grass, and some bath in the sunlight that isn't there. What do you do? I don't really do much at all. I don't want to go in the tank. I don't like it, but I have to, don't I? And I don't know, maybe that makes everything better. I, I just want to know what's real, because I, I, I don't know anymore. And I don't, I don't know, I just let myself be taken, glancing at Francis weekly for a moment before facing forward. Francis uh, looks over, blinks, and kind of looks down at his toes, sighs. Maybe this is just reality now. Maybe there's nothing more to be expected, or maybe this is a purgatory of sorts. Whatever it is, um, one can hope it ends soon. You are led down to the cellar going by the old laundry room and a few old research rooms. Francis, you remember the metal tables and the guards down here, but it's further down. You go through a heavy metal door into a circular room with stone floor, walls and ceiling. In the middle of the room you see a large glass tank, four meters across and three meters high. A ramp goes up to the side of it, and a platform around it. Inside the tank you see two large tubes that is filled with water, and there are people in them. They have something black over their faces. It seems to move. The area outside the large tubes are also filled with water, and several large slugs are moving around in there. And now you see it. The humans in the tubes have slugs over their faces. How do you react? Uh, uh, Hey, um, 
uh, nurses, orderlies, uh, I prefer not to be here. They don't say anything. On a metal table to the side in this room, you see a fat man. Hey. You recognize him. Oh, God. It's Edward. You have seen him in the recreation room before. On another table, you see another man, Anatoly. You remember him as well, as a patient, also from the recreation room. But he isn't strapped down as Edward is. He rises and jumps off the table, looking straight at you. He's also naked. He removes a tube from his own side and connects it to Edward instead. It goes to an old glass container filled with a blue liquid. Some of it pours out from his open wound. Uh. Dr. Hall comes up to him while he looks at you. Anatoly, um, sorry to disturb, but uh, I think we have found the Dreamwalker. Not now, Sebastian. I already know. He tried to shoot me in the dream. Anatoly turns to Dr. Hall. Sebastian, he says. And Dr. Hall nods. I brought Edward Hare. And Jacqueline is in the other room. Go see to her. As you want, Anatoly, right away. Uh, what about the angel? How long will you continue with this experiment? Anatoly turns to Dr. Hall. What about him? It's of no concern to you. Do as I say. The experiment is almost over. We have the English family, all but one. Awake now as well. I'm just waiting for the murderer, the magician and the traveler to find their way here as well. Oh, oh, we're close then. Dr. Hall shines up and rubs his hands. Um, should we really talk about these things in front of these two? Dr. Hall looks at you. And Atoli looks at you. Yes? It doesn't matter. They are going into the tanks. Then we remove the ship from them. It didn't work well with these. One have a connection to a higher power that I don't understand. And the other doesn't believe anything we show him. They die today. Anatoly? Yes, Sebastian. Did, did, did the Dreamwalker really kill Sarah? Anatoly sigh and look at you, Francis. Uh... Yes, she was too damaged. I had him crack her head open with an axe. It took him three or four swings before she died. He's bloodthirsty, but he lacks finesse. He got the job done, though. Do you, do, do you really think he will kill the rest as we planned? There's a moment of silence after Dr. Hall's question. Then Anatoly turns back to him. Yes, I'm sure he will. If need be, we can always release Billy. And the night child is by his side now. She has finally embraced her lust for blood. They both turn from you and leave the room. You are taken up to the platform above the tank and the tubes. The two humans in the tubes are removed and the slugs are pulled from their face. They are dead. The eyes have been sucked out, and something is moving in their mouths. The bodies are taken away, and you are placed above the tubes on the ramp. And I want you to roll keep it together. Yes, I have started to struggle. I'm panicking. So much random names and things occurring, and I, I, this isn't real either. It's not real. This is, it's all not real. Nothing's real. I don't want to be here. Oh, God, this is real. We have to... Uh, what to do? Francis will, will try to struggle and kick out, do whatever he can. Let's see your keep it together roll, Francis. Fourteen. Fourteen. I rolled an eleven. Ooh. So you can choose what happens to you, how you react, and if you get a minus to stability or something else. 
yes, I shall choose to lose one stability as I am scared because I am completely and utterly terrified. For a moment, I thought this at least was the reality. But now I think this is just another, another illusion and I don't know what's real and it's all awful. I don't want to go in this tank. Francis. Uh, Francis uh, kind of bites down on his tongue, getting angry and kind of this righteous anger. Uh, he says, look, you limp dick motherfuckers. I'm not going down. And neither is my friend here. I'm, and he just tries to push and, and, and swing his head back to connect with anything. You hear your own voice, Francis, as you speak. You talk funny, as if you were drunk. They have uh, probably put something in your medicine or in your breakfast. You feel sleepy and you can't stand up. They are holding you up. You are stripped and your hands are bound with leather strings. You know you will go down into the tubes, feet first, down to the slugs. Suddenly, reality flashes. You are alone on a rusty platform, then back again. Hands grab you to put you down. Reality flashes again, and you are alone. An explosion from above somewhere, and the light flickers in this now old circular room. There's no one else here. The tanks are dry. And you are alone. You hear rapid gunfire far away. You fall down to the floor, bound, alone. Oliver, you look at Francis, who looks back with wide eyes. There's no one else there. What do you do? I look to Francis and I just close my eyes, clenching them shut tight. I just start muttering under my breath I just want to wake up please wake up please wake up please wake up I just want to wake up you aren't bound no more suddenly the leather strings are gone and reality flashes once again and the room is even more filled with dust dirt and the rust takes over the whole metal ramp and stairs around the tanks. It's like it's as if uh, this room hasn't been used for maybe 20 years. You feel a little bit better and you can stand up if you want to. I think I just say curled up on the floor. In fact, when I feel that my hands are free, I use them to cover my face as I weep. Oliver? Yes. Yes. What? What do you want, Francis? What do you want? Uh, are, is this it? Is this, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm tired, man. I think they put something in my whatever, my medicine. <laughs> are we even taking medicine? Maybe, maybe we're finally in real life and we weren't in an asylum and we weren't in my home and maybe we're just two guys who hang out in an abandoned, I don't know. Or maybe you're not. <laughs> uh, that seems, I don't like that. <laughs> Can you get up? After a time, I do start staggering up and looking around the room, and I'm like, none of it makes any sense. What the fuck are you? Uh, like, are you even real? Maybe you're the only real thing. Maybe I'm not real. Oh, you're the magician, and I'm the traveler, or, or Mickey Mouse and Darth Vader. I don't know. Uh, that sounds all made up. I know, right? <laughs> oh, God. All right, all right. One thing at a time. I am real. My name is Francis. I am a youth pastor, and you are Oliver. That's that's pretty much all I know about you. I wish I could tell you more, but I don't know. I, I think I went to live in America, but I also went to live in Sweden. I am also in a hospital, and also apparently people on chairs get up and blue gunk, and they talk about ships. <laughs> that was the best part. He was like, the ships in these two. What the fuck does that even mean? I don't know. Uh... Can you help me or, or something? Okay. I, I go over and I try and help Francis up. You get up. Oh, God. You are still uh, at the asylum, but now this circular room that you are in looks old and abandoned. One look outside the door 
tells you that the corridor is in the same condition. Francis will try to open the door. It's open. Oh, God, thank God. All right, you know what? This must have just been a fever dream of some sort. Let's go home, okay? You live in America, I live in America. Let's just go home. Yeah, I live in America, I think. Let's um, pray God Sweden is not outside these doors. Hey, Sweden's not a bad country. I live... I thought I lived... Oh, I don't know. Let's just... Okay. Look, all of my time so far has not been good here. Oh my I don't God. even know where here is. Like, currently, it looks like a horror film. <laughs> yeah. Um, hello? Is anyone... Is anyone there? There's no answer. You know that the corridor go around the middle part of the cellar, where you are now, in a square. There are two other corridors leading down another floor, and there's where the metal tables are, Francis. Are there any doors leading out? There's a stairway leading up to the lobby. All right, that sounds good. Oliver, uh, I've been here before, so why don't you follow me and hopefully we can get out of here. Okay, I suppose that's fine. Yes, let's do that. Let's just get out of here. Yeah, I'd love to get some eggs or something. Just, oh, God, I'm parched and hungry. As you are moving through the corridors, fleshes come and go, and you get visions of the real asylum you was in before, and the people there, but they don't seem to be aware of you. At one point, a doctor walks right through you, Oliver, as you go around a corner. You move past the laundry room and up the stairs to the first floor. More flashes and visions makes it hard for you to focus. As you peer out from the stairway door into the lobby, you see total chaos there. Around 20 old bodies lies on the floor all around. The furnitures and everything around is old and dusty, and the bodies are rotten, but still alive. But in such a condition that they can't do anything, they just lie there, groaning. The gate to the asylum is open, and one door is missing. It's dark outside, and white and gray ash is raining down from the sky. A lamp flickers just outside the gate, lighting up the stair. It's cold, very cold. I shiver as I look at the bodies and then I just try and run to the exit saying, Look at the doors, let's just run, Francis, let's just run. As you're running through the lobby towards the doors, I want you to roll, observe a situation, perception. Well, I got a five. Well, for me... Francis, you can ask one question. Uh, you see mirrors on the walls, still hanging, whole, and something feel very wrong with the mirrors. Do you have any questions? It currently poses the biggest threat to me. You see on the outside that uh, the ash that falls down is mixed with rain. And as it falls to the ground, to the stair, it's like it's acid rain. You think that's the biggest threat? Yeah, I, I grab um, Oliver, kind of taking his hand and pointing to the ash. I don't think we can go outside. Wait, what? And the mirror seems to show another picture of reality. You see doctors move in the mirror and the asylum looks used uh, normal light. With my five, can the one question I get to ask, even though something bad will then happen, uh, be what's being hidden from me as I'm just staring outside, letting Francis stop me, but then just looking at this mirror and just, I just want to know what's real. You think reality is what you see in the mirror, not where you are. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Francis, maybe, maybe we just, you know, because this is like hell, I think. That that makes sense. Uh, maybe that's like a nicer version of hell, and we walk through this mirror and we'll go to a nice place, maybe. Or maybe it'll be worse, I don't know. 
I don't know. I just, I feel like a rat in a maze and I, I'm tired of going through different doorways and portals and not having any control whatsoever about what happens. The only constant has been you, Oliver. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, well, 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 didn't you know some other people? I don't know if they were real or not to be anymore, to be honest with you. I don't remember them very well. I know I spent some time with them, but everything's just... Where are you from? Who are you? I don't know. I don't know anymore, okay? I thought I did. I thought I was a student in Sweden who wanted to do computers for a living because they're fun. And then I also might have gone to America and maybe I got to a, a hospital for some reason. Uh, maybe that's all a lie as well. Uh, maybe I... Hold was... on, hold on. And I'll slap Oliver in the face. Ah! Pull it together, man. Okay? Normal questions. We're just two two guys, all right? Talking about our past. Nothing is weird is going on. Just, just look in my eyes. We are here. We are in this moment. Breathe. And that's the moment when something grabs your ankle, Oliver. One of the bodies. Oh, God. And it uh, drags itself towards you. The mouth open. I attempt to kick at this thing, screaming. Almost now more angry than scared anymore. And... Well, that's the first thing I'll do, that, yes. A violence roll. A favorite stat. 16. You can uh, describe uh, what you do, what happens. One moment I'm looking at Francis, trying to breathe, and then this thing grabs my leg, and I just turn round, and I just kick at it. I kick myself free, and then I kick at it again, and I think its hand probably recoils a little, and then I find a head, and I just stamp on this head, and I stamp again, and again, and my foot eventually breaks through something and is covered in blood and I just keep kicking and as I'm doing this I just look at Francis and start dragging him towards the mirror saying we need to go we need to not be here not be here oh god okay fine oh, I will take all of his hands squeezing it as I follow him where do you go I go to the mirror and I try and walk through it Maybe that's not possible, but at this point in time, I no longer really care what is and what isn't possible. It's uh, solid. You can't walk through. When I actually feel that it is solid, I scream in frustration and try kicking the mirror in. You break the mirror, it falls down. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Francis, we're not leaving here. This is it. This is the new home. I bet all the corpses are going to get up in a minute and eat us because... This, you, 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 were, you were right, I was wrong I, I'm sorry I didn't believe This is hell, isn't it? And this is where I've gone because I don't believe I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, God Please forgive me uh, Look, look, God has already forgiven you um, We're gonna be okay, Oliver Alright, uh, let, let's just get out of here, alright? I'll protect you I'll, I'll always protect you Just, if, I'm gonna save someone And I'm gonna save you, Oliver Okay Okay. And I will kind of put my hand over his shoulders and, and lead us out into the ash and the acid rain. When you uh, gaze outside, you see a city in ruins, dead, rotten bodies all around, still moving. There are movements in the shadows, in the dark. Something is waiting. The city landscape isn't right. There are buildings that shouldn't be here and buildings that are gone that should be here. Several towers throughout the city, higher than any known skyscraper. In the distance you hear gunfire from several directions, but it's far away and you're looking out at the silhouette of your city, but it's completely wrong. What do you do? There's nowhere to go, Francis. It's all... Oliver, there is a place to go, all right? And that's forward. Oh, okay. Just come oh, with okay. me. We'll be okay. I'll take care of you. Okay. We got this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. That sounds great. Okay, fine. Let's go forward. Let's go to... Maybe I point in a random direction. 
maybe away from gunfire. Maybe, maybe uh, that uh, that's funny. Why wouldn't hell people be shooting each other? <laughs> that's actually kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it kind of makes sense. Uh, hell being a place of violence. I mean, how many people have died due to gunshot? It's so detached. You don't have to look the person in the eye. You just watch them bleed out. You can look away and move on with your life. Yeah. Say, uh, it looked like you recognized some of the. Was one of those guys the creepy doctor that I think one of the realities was talking about? There was a creepy doctor. It seemed so fucking ridiculous at the time. <laughs> oh no, it's 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 him. Yeah, doctor, doctor Hall and the horrible experiments. It must be connected somehow to to where we're at now. But I think we have a chance to move forward, or maybe we're in those tubs of water with that thing in our mouth and this is just all in our head either way uh, forward we go I don't know anywhere else I nod weakly but I let him lead me on you are on the old stone stairway that leads down to the ground and the rain burns your skin but it uh, stops as you walk out you see shadows out in the park and the city moving fast for cover and into buildings as you get closer to them. After about 10 minutes, you have left the asylum behind you and you are out on the streets in a city of ruins. You hear a large bell from somewhere. The sound comes from far away, but you can't make out from what direction. I look around, my breathing actually a little better for some reason. And in this ruined landscape, do any of these buildings look, does any one of them look a little more prominent than any of the others? A little maybe less ruined or quite large or with, or looks interesting in some way, like a different sort of building than just like a old abandoned skyscraper? No, all the buildings look uh, like ruins, but uh, they aren't destroyed. They are just old. And uh, they all look uh, menacing. Well, what do you think? Do we just maybe... St- I don't think we want to be seen by anyone here. Maybe we go in a building, or, or maybe we don't. They all look the same. I think... I I get it now. Oliver, do you know what this is? No, what? This is Eden. Is in the Garden of Eden? Yes, look at the... the- Towers of structures, trees, all allegories, metaphors about something. It's the only thing that makes sense. You and I are back where it all began, where sin first took root. Oh, okay. You know what? Why not? I, why not? Uh, uh, so then uh, there's a tree somewhere with an apple. <laughs> Maybe if we eat that, we'll be okay. No, Oliver, this is, this is our destiny. This is our reality. In every sense of meaning and belonging, we have searched our whole lives, hoping that we would fit in some sort of puzzle. And this is it. This is the puzzle. And we are the pieces. Together, you and I can recreate this world in our God's image. You see people moving around, but they all hide in the shadows as you get near. Right. They are hiding from us. Uh, Okay, well, what do we... For they are ashamed. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. And Francis will look out towards the buildings and say, in a loud, booming voice, My name is Pastor Francis Tully. I am here. A man throw a glass bottle your way. It breaks by your feet. And he scream. You're not welcome here! Go back to your street, fuckheads! The watery liquid splashes around your feet, and you feel the scent of old piss. Infidels. Then he run away down an alleyway, like the devil was chasing him. Okay, why would he run? I, I start looking around very anxious to see. I can't assume he's running away from us. I assume there might be something else coming nearby, is there? Others enter the street around you with homemade weapons, with a threatening look, but they keep their distance and they don't say anything. It's at least ten of them now. 
Francis, if this is the Garden of Eden, I think there are other people here already. Maybe, maybe everyone comes here when you die. Uh, maybe, maybe the afterlife is the Garden of Eden. That, that's interesting. Uh. All right. Uh, and using uh, my charismatic aura, I will put my hands up. Come, children. I will show you towards the light, a beautiful horizon. But this place may have a little bit of decency to it. Give me a roll. Ooh. You can choose one option. I'd like to catch their attention. You do that. They are standing, watching you. They seem curious. Hey. Uh, hey, you lot. Uh, lo- it's true. The, uh, the, the pastor here, he knows. He knows what's going on. Maybe better than any of us. Maybe if we listen to him, we can find out what's going on together, right? Right? You, you seem like people. Yeah, let's listen to him. You shut the fuck up. I can do that. I, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. Sure. Now you will respect my companion, Oliver. He has, he is the first acolyte you see. In all of us, there is a bit of divinity. God has placed in us the means to find absolution. Uh, and with this, as I'm talking to the crowd, I will use voice of insanity. Let's roll for that one. Ooh. Uh, so I, with an 18, I get to choose three. So I will incite the crowd into celebrating the concepts uh, that I am presenting. Attract other people to join in the crowd and unite and yeah, unite the crowd to fight for me. It takes maybe five or ten minutes. Then it's uh, probably around hundred people around you. And they are all eager to follow you. Yes. We are but children, infants. This here is the beginning of the new Eden. And Oliver, as my first acolyte, the love between us only grows as we have stood side by side through the eons together. And through dreaming, we have made manifest something beautiful and true. Together, we will recreate this land in God's own image. The cross etched into everyone's back, into the very streets of our souls, until we reach divinity. Yeah. He's right. Let's all listen to him. He knows what is being said. He speaks the truth. Together we can band together and we can we can cast out all those and the monsters, the demons that surround this place. We can rebuild. We can make things better. This is our new life. Yes, this is this is all, exactly how it all works. Yes, Father, tell us what we must do first. Where must we go? What will we do about the Guardian? We will rip the guardian asunder. There is no guardian beside us, besides our reliance on faith in God and in God's almighty power. That is how we will defeat any undivine champion that is before us. Gather your weapons, your claws and your teeth and gnash against anything that will dare look at us without appalling reverence. And the hounds. What are you going to do about the hounds? Aren't you listening? The same thing. Get together. Again, you're not all weak. I, I thought I was weak, but I can, I can. Yeah, and I try and grab like a brick or something from somewhere. I'm like, see, you, you have two hands. We. It doesn't matter if we die anyway, because this is, we're already dead, right? So just get together and kill. We'll kill anything that tries to stop us. Isn't that right, Father? Many of them with homemade weapons raises them uh, high up in the air and screams, Yeah, let's do that. And uh, the crowd is cheering and screaming. Oh, yes. Today is the beginning. Genesis. And by the end of our revolution, revelation, when the beast comes forth, we will knock it down on both of its hind legs. Yeah, let's kill the angel. And suddenly, everything goes silent. The crowd is dead silent. They are looking at one man in the middle, maybe 20 meters from you two. He looks around with big eyes, and it was 
him who said, let's kill the angel. Now he looks afraid and you seem to have lost the grip of them, Francis. And the bell is tolling somewhere in the city. And the crowd is starting to run. They scatter all around you and run into buildings. Oh, screaming, please. the guardian is coming. The angel is angry. If you all stay and fight, we can take on the guardian. Where are you all going? Oh, you foolish infidels. You are going to lose the chance at divinity. And they are all gone. Okay. Okay. Uh, Oliver, it's you and I now. Yes, I know. Uh, shit. We had something there. Why did they all run away? Outside an old apartment building, on a stone stair, you see an old woman. She looks up at you. She spits. What do you have to say to us? Never mind those cowards, she says. They don't dare do anything. They just talk and talk. She turns back and continues to look into a small hand mirror. You see light coming from it. But are you different? Why are you not afraid? Like, again, I, I tried, we tried telling them that we all got together. We could defeat anything. The death doesn't matter. Oh, you should be afraid. <laughs> After all, you're in this place now. Oh, well, yeah. There's danger here that you... Can't imagine. I guess you're new here. We are. But God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, truth, and of sound mind. There is nothing here that I will not smite in the name of my God in my first acolyte, Oliver. Oh, God. I remember when I was alive. I was a woman of God, but no more. In the mirror, you see the city behind and around her. It's full of life and it's daylight in the mirror. We're all trapped in this hell for one reason or another. God have forsaken us. This is hell. She looks up to you. What did you do? Why are you here? I start breathing heavily again, and I say, Father, you, you said this was the Garden of Eden. You said I was wrong, and it wasn't hell. But she's saying it's hell. I think maybe it is hell. Oh, shit. She is but the snake. Don't listen to her. We create our own path in our own garden. We get to plant the seeds, and she is nothing but a weed. <laughs> you have to be real in you. You just arrived, didn't you? I swear, woman, I will gnash my teeth at you and split your skull asunder if you keep talking. Wait. <laughs> my name isn't woman. My name is Penny. And you are? Well, if you want to, it really doesn't matter here. Francis. My name is Francis, if you should know. Well, hello, Francis. Welcome. Wait, okay. Okay, no, we're sorry. We, uh, again, I look at the brick I'm holding and I put it down and it's strange that for a moment I really did see Francis in a different light but then suddenly I feel slightly less fervent and I look at this woman ah, so, so, so wait okay no okay if we're not chosen or well, maybe we are chosen but well please then let's go in a building maybe be safe and you tell us what's you tell us what's going on how does hell work I, I, I didn't think I did anything wrong but maybe that's that's why I'm in hell, because I didn't think I deserved to be in hell. Right? Is that how it works? For all that fallen short, everyone falls short. There's, there's no meaning for us to be here if this is hell. Yeah, we're all evil. Humanity. There's not a good soul in all of humanity. That's why we need God's forgiveness. This is one of many hells. Purgatory. And every one here are children of Shagidiel. In one way or another, we all have been abused, used, and tormented in life. And now we are stuck in this hell. <laughs> we all did something to make him aware of how special we are. Something evil. Or we have done the same thing to other children. Me, I drowned my daughter as she was a baby. I thought I protected her from the angel, but I just made things worse. This was in 2020. 
Now I have been here for more than 20 years. So when you're ready, what have you done? Or what have been done to you? I look towards Francis, clearly at a loss of words. I, I, I took advantage of a young girl in my church. She looked up to me as, as a man of God, and I was so lonely, and she was so warm. I take a little step back from Francis at this, sort of just like, what? Yeah, what? it's always the man of God, isn't it? Lonely. We're all lonely. Why is it such you a... You follow s- your God, but you're lonely. And you do things. She spits. I'm sorry. You know what? I don't even know if I want to know anymore. Like, fuck. What? Oh, God. Please don't tell me. No, you know what? Don't tell me anything else about it. I don't want to know. Well, there's one thing you really must know. You have probably seen the rotten corpses lying around, moving around, groaning and trying to grip you. Yeah. You don't die (laughs) here. And you never heal. That's why some allow us to eat them. That's the only way you leave, we think. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, like, I, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I don't deserve to be here. Why am I here? I don't even know. (laughs) Well, boy, you must have done something. I don't know. Or maybe you're in the wrong. She looks around and her eyes falls on Francis and she doesn't say anymore. How do you... Who who has the answers? Who? Where's the head? Fucking devil. Hey, 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 you know what? If I'm here and it's hell and we're gonna fucking rot and and, then with Francis here... like. Who, who, who says? Who's the judge? Where's the judge, jury, and executioner, and all that fuck? I don't have any answers right now. Well, you must be hungry. I can help you. I have extra. She stands up. She's very small and thin, and her clothes are old and dirty. She starts to move up the stairs. Come. My daughter should have a meal ready now. She opens the door and holds it up for you. What do you do? I start walking forwards, but I pause for a moment as I say, wait, wait, Francis, who the fuck is Sarah? She, uh, she was just a part of my, my youth group. So, you, mm. how old was she? Tell me. Francis doesn't answer. He just looks down at the ground. (sighs) That guy, he said, he said you killed Sarah. Did you kill Sarah? The Sarah. Not... There was this image of her, and it was not Sarah. It, I don't remember. Oh, fuck. Fuck. I thought, great, you're the only person here I have, and I don't want to believe about you anymore. And fine, let's go. Let's go with this woman and, and her, ki- her kid. She said she killed her kid, so that probably means her kid's upstairs, uh, you know, running away. Uh, hell is so fucking stupid. And I move into the room. Francis follows his shoulders, kind of slunken. <sighs> you follow Penny inside, up to flights of stairs, and into an old apartment. You see lots of people inside, and many inside are children. You haven't seen any, uh, any children on the outside so far. The apartment is small, and inside you see a child not more than two years old, but she's walking around, climbing up a stair, stirring in a pot of some stew or something. The shy look at you and speak. Mom, what the fuck? You're too damn nice. We don't have much food. It's very strange hearing this voice from a little two-year-old child. Penny looks at the small child. (laughs) We have enough, Isa. Don't be like that. The small baby jumps down and uh, add another two plates and spoons to the table, all the time muttering, Fucking bitch, first you drown me, then you let strangers eat our food, and I'm stuck in this fucking body, and you have no idea what it's like with short arms and legs, trying to do normal things, you fucking bitch. 
Penny looks at you. Never mind, Isa. She's never happy. And I don't blame her. She has been stuck in this body for all her life. <laughs> or I should say death. Sit down. Let's eat. The meat is almost fresh. You are so lucky. And yes, Isa here. There's enough for all of us. The small child stops. Give her mother an evil look. But don't say anything. Penny start to add stew to the plates. Are you guys going to try to fucking eat us? <laughs> Why should we do that? <laughs> we have meat here. Where is it? On, uh, on the, in the stew. Francis will move towards the stew. She pokes around with a finger in the stew on your plate and uh, show you a couple of pieces of meat. Why aren't you eating us? Because we're still kicking. It's obvious, isn't it? Like, again, it's very strange. Part of me is still the rationalist I was once before, and even with all this occurring, it's still trying to at least apply some logic to this situation. Is it obvious, uh, Francis? Uh, y- 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 the-, the ones who can't move anymore. Uh, that-, that makes sense from a predator to predator environment. Uh, look, lady, you can eat all you want. We don't want your food. I- what-, what I want? You know what I- Okay, okay. Who's the guardian? Is the guardian the one who runs the place? If you if you kill the guardian, do you get to go to another hell? Maybe we'll do that. That sounds fun. Great. You can't kill anything or anyone here. You can try, but they won't die. Can you beat it long enough so you can go to the door to somewhere else? I don't know. You said you said I might be in the wrong hell. How do we get to another hell? The guardian is the one who keeps order in the city with its hounds. He moves around with uh, maybe a hundred, maybe two hundred, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, What? Yeah, that's how we get our meat. What happens if you try and speak to the Guardian? Is he the kind of Guardian? It's like, boom, he, he'll tr- well, you can't die. No, no, no you, you, you better keep away from the Guardian. He, he, he's not human, you see. He's something else. I'm not sure. He's a, he's a product of... Uh, Something else. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Just stay away from him. And <laughs> you will never get out of here. But uh, if you want to, to end the torment, we could eat you. We could, if you want to. No, 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 no. There's gotta, there's, no, no, come on. Come on, there's got to be something. There's got to be... Uh, oh, you, you're doing the whole thing of there's no way out, but th- there must be a way out of a death like... What, who else? So that you've got a guardian. You got hounds. What about all these losers? Is that it? That's everyone here. What about the hospital with the weird doctor people in it? Who are they? Doctor people? Yeah, a guy called Anton and a guy called Edward and and, and the the Doctor Hall. I don't know that name. (laughs) No, I don't know that name. What about the angel? Yeah, I don't don't speak about the angel too much. Oh why not? It's not good for you. Is the guardian gonna come and get me, get, kick me out? <laughs> yeah, he could. There, there was, uh, <laughs> there was another newcomer here yesterday. <laughs> uh, well, he, he didn't. When the guardian came, he didn't. Uh, well, he stayed in the street, and the hounds of hell dragged him down into the fire. Oh God. You know what, I, Francis, you can stay here and you can... Aren't you gonna eat? No, you eat. It's all for you. Good for you. Don't want to take your food. Well, okay. Francis will eat. Yeah, you, Francis. You you enjoy. You enjoy eating your food, you, you fucking sick fuck. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna call the angel. Because cause you know what? It, I, it doesn't fucking matter anyway, right? So, so maybe they'll at least give me some answers before they turn me into... Stop, no. Oliver. Stop. Just sit down. Why should I do anything you tell me to do? Just because I was human does not mean I'm not against or for you. I sit down. The little baby sits down on the other side of the table. She looks at the both of you, mutters something, and... Well, mother, Jenny is almost out of breast milk. I don't think we can make any stew soon again. 
The food and the stew taste funny, Francis. It's uh, spicy, but uh, you can't uh, tell what spices. And, uh, well, it tastes really funny. It's somewhat sweet. <sighs> Francis leans back, enjoying this the sweetness of it. Some normalcy. It's having a meal for supper. Something like that. I'm just staring at you across from the other end of the table, not touching any of this food. I just mutter, you better help me. I'm guessing you're from your city, the woman says. Yeah? Why? <laughs> we all end up close to where we lived as we were alive. And your home is still around here. Don't ask me how, but it will be there for you if you go there. You might even find old friends. I think that's the best way forward. Maybe that could be the start of it. Eden. Wait, it's when she mentions this that, again, in that hazy sea of memories, which I now no longer know which is real and which is not, but okay, I know where my home in Sweden was. It's currently in a crater. Where's the Jersey home? Do I remember that? You don't remember that at all. You don't remember the school. You, you only remember the institute and the, the inside of it. Nothing of the city. Ugh, great. Go to your house. Fucking crazy priest's house. Great, yeah, we'll go there. You know, the only reason I'm fucking sticking with you is because you need to help me. And, and, and maybe I'm just as bad as you. So, I, you know, I'm going to save the, the final judgment till then, because maybe I am. But till then, you, you're helping me, Francis. Okay? Haven't I always... I mean, how dare you judge me? Oh, I'm judging you. I'm so judging you. I, you know what? It turns out it doesn't matter what I think because we're in hell anyway. And maybe I'm just as bad, but you know what? Maybe I'll... Uh, and my anger kind of peters away a little because, again, as I'm saying, that maybe I've done something just as bad. Maybe I have, and it makes my confidence lower a little. The woman leans back and uh, she have finished her plate. Do you eat everything, Francis? Yeah, I'm hungry. After you are done, the woman looks at you and says, Let's give thanks to Ray for this meal. To who? To Ray. He was a nice man. Now he's gone. Where did he go? Well, you have eaten him. Oh. You should have tasted him. He was a nice guy. Isn't that an oxymoron? He's here, so how can he be a nice guy? Didn't you literally just say everyone here is the worst? Like, I don't even know how I, I, you know, apparently I'm the worst, he's the worst, you're the worst, everyone's fucking the worst. Sweet, at least. Can we go now? I want to go to his house. Yeah, let's, let's just go. I don't want to be here anymore. As you come out from the building, you notice that it's darker now, and ash is falling again. There's no rain, just white and black ash. The streets are completely empty. The door behind you is closed. And you also hear a bang as the bar is pushed into place on the inside. A voice from the other side of the door says, Hurry home, they are soon here. Follow me, Oliver. I think I remember the way. My mood has changed quite a bit. I'm no longer as panicky and jittery, at least on the outward side. I just remark... Yeah, sure, let's go to your house. And then, you know what we're going to do after that? We're going to walk out to the street, and I'm going to say, that word as many times as I need for them to come. And then we end it, because fuck living forever in this. But okay, go to your house first. Sure, why? What's the harm in that? Francis, as you're looking around, uh, trying to get your bearing, you finally figure out what's wrong here. Everything is turned around as if you were inside a mirror image of the city. And you're starting to feel sick. You're starting to feel a bit ill after the dinner. Uh, Oliver, can I put my hand on your shoulder? It's just... No. No, you can walk on your own. You're fine. Keep going. Come on. You can't die, remember? We're all fine. I saw what you did in the car. I remember you mowed down people in order to save your own life. What? <laughs> No, no, I accidentally ran people over when everyone in the city was dying and they were, I just couldn't stop. 
I might have taken advantage of someone, but I've never killed anyone. Oh, uh, uh, what about that guy with a gun? Oh, oh, because that maybe I think in one reality that happened. You shot a fucking guy. He was an abomination. Oh, well, there you go then. I go over and sort of haul you up, like just fucking put your arm on my fucking shoulder. Let's get to your house quickly before we get eaten alive by dogs or something. Uh, fine. As you look around, Francis, you think that your house is maybe 20 minutes walk from here. But it's hard to say. You recognize the streets, some buildings, but much are not the same. A strange sound is starting to echo through the city. It's dark, foreboding of evil, almost like a siren. We should pick up the pace. In the distance, screams are cut off as soon as they start. It chills you to the bone. You don't see anything though, and maybe that's for the best by what the sound tells you. Okay, come on then. Let's, yeah, let's pick up the pace. Let, let's just go. Come on. Yeah, agreed. Let's just start galloping along. After a few minutes, as you come around the corner, you stop. A hundred meters ahead of you, you see something. Naked beings, humanoids, walking on all four. They have no eyes, and they smell the air. The street is full of them, so many that you can't count them. In the middle of them a tall man, much taller than a normal human. He have large hooks piercing his naked skin. Chains hanging behind him like a parted metal cloak. His arms end in two long blades where the hands would have been. He looked your way, lets out a screech, and points one blade at you. The mass of creatures, like animals, a pack of dogs, start running your way. They snarl, sniff, and growl as they are closing in. What do you do? Can I try, in a bit of a panic, to observe the situation? Of course. Fourteen. I can ask one question. My question is, what's the best way through this? Do you remember the woman saying that uh, if you get inside a building, you are safe? Francis, quick! Get that building! Let's go! Get the door open! Quick! Quickly! (laughs) Oh, God. Dan, you wake up. You stink of sweat and dirt, and your cover is moldy and old. You lie on your couch in your house. But all the furniture are old, broken, and it looks like you haven't cleaned your house for ages. You remember something about a fat man. You traded something for something, but you don't remember what it was now. You have an eye patch over your left eye. You traded your eye, and you have to find something, a book. Now you remember, the SWAT dealer. He wanted your left eye and Dr. Hall's notebook. But what did you get? You remember that the bargain didn't go well. It was hard. But you and Vicky got something. You and your friends were sent to the real world. You want to go home. This is your home. Your house in Jersey City. But everything is old, broken, destroyed or gone. Everything is a mess. Beside you on the table, you see the revolver. You grip it, and everything feels better. You notice that it's fully loaded again. Shiny. And it's yours. On the outside, you see something white fall from the sky. At first, you think of snow, but it's not that. And the street and the other houses nearby are all wrong. Further up the street, you see two men running with a pack of monsters. The same monsters you saw in the desert, the kind that fed on that old man. They are chasing Francis and Oliver. Somehow you know that you are safe in your home. The creatures won't enter a building. You don't know how you know that, but you do. You see that Francis and Oliver It's running towards your front door. What do you do? 
open the door and step out on to just, just right outside the front door, just one step, and I'll yell at them. Francis! Oliver! Come over here! Hey! Oh, God, yes! <laughs> I run towards him and then just quickly run into the house. As you enter the house where Dan is, the creatures outside stop and start to go back slowly. Once you close the door, you don't hear the foreboding sounds from the outside anymore. The house is in chaos, and Dan looks like he's been here for ages. His clothes are worn out, old, dirty, and he stinks. He holds a shiny revolver to his chest, though, almost like a baby. He seemed to have lost his left eye. Well, he had a leather eye patch over it, at least. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I live here. We just got here. How long have you been here? I have no idea. <laughs> you, uh, you look familiar. I think you look like one of the people from one of the realities. Uh, but he didn't have an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oliver kind of cracked a little bit. He's kind of being a little bitch right now. Oh! Oh, you, you, uh, Mr. F- F- don't you fucking dare. Don't you dare. You turned on me so quick. Yeah, because you fucking suck, man. You, oh, God. Fucking... Ah. You've been through it, I take it. Yeah. <sighs> I'm just frustrated right now. I just yeah. Here, have a have a seat. Take a load off. How did you get here? Oh, you know how it is. I think we died probably in the earthquake. Maybe I don't know. And uh, now we're in hell. And uh, you're Dan, right? Yeah, you are Dan. You're Dan. You also came to hell. That's great. This isn't hell. This is purgatory, at least. What's the difference? I'm going to walk over and move the moldy blanket off the couch and sort of, here, Oliver, don't mind that. Just relax. Yeah, why don't you sit your bitch ass down, I guess. In a minute, Francis, I'm going to come and I'm going to fucking punch you in the fucking face. You keep calling me a fucking bitch. Do you, Dad? Hey, tell Dan! Tell Dan why you're here! There we go. I don't have to repeat that, okay? We've all done horrible things. I have to. What have you done, Francis? I didn't run people over. That's for one thing. And it was an accident. I didn't want to do that. And it just happened. Your thing is deliberate. Is it not? Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Accidents only happen one time. You did it multiple times. I slump back a little on the sofa and I look to Dan and say, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you want to know what he did? What he did? Oh, OK. Well, yeah, he won't tell you. Oh, I, I will. I don't care. Yeah, I, 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 he fucking murders kids. He's one of those sort of priests. He's murders not murder his... anyone. How do you know? Don't seem very sure of that. Maybe you did. Well, I know one thing. You did murder people. I did it accidentally, and I regretted it immediately. And You I... made a choice that your life was more important than anyone else's, and right, you so killed you, uh, people. Are you arguing about the Oliver running over the people? fleeing from the... I am just saying I don't need to be judged. Oh. How did you get here, like, specifically? What were you doing when you ended up here? I don't even know, like... I assume you were arguing. No. Yeah. I... No, we were... Uh, honestly, I, I held for a moment there. I actually thought, <laughs> I actually thought Francis was like the Messiah or something. I totally <laughs> believed it. Totally. Um, fuck. No. I don't know, Dan. We were either we, 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 we were at one point where well, I hit him with a hammer and he hit me with a hammer. Then we were with the doctor. Then we went in the tank. I, I, I might actually be American. Oh no, no, I'm Swedish, but I think I lived in America for six years, or maybe I didn't. I <laughs> and I just stopped. The tank? Y- yeah. A tank. Yeah. Slug tanks. The slugs. Did they put the slugs on you? I I don't I don't remember. Well, yeah, I think they did. I don't know. Like, I think the guy, the, the guy in the chair was all like, "Ah, we got him now! I'm an evil fucking genius or something." You know, like in a, <laughs> in a Bond film or something. Goldfinger sitting there going, "Aha! My master plan's fucking complete or something. Almost complete." Ships. We got ships in us. You got a ship in you, Dan? That's what you got in you—a ship. Oh God. No ships. Fucking crazy. 
Okay, so yeah, I'm trying to uh, figure things out about how they got here and <laughs> let's see if that might possibly give me some information about how I got here. The information you get uh, when you're looking around and looking outside is the first thing you notice now is that is everything is turned around as if you was looking into a mirror or something. And the city doesn't look right. Uh, the streets are there, but the buildings are wrong here and there. And you don't really get any other information and you don't see any, any signs of anything else. You don't think that uh, this is the real Jersey City. After talking to Edward earlier, your first thing is uh, that comes to mind is, fuck, I'm in another dream. Well, it's not fair, I tell you, it's not fair. I, 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 hey, priest, how does that work? Like, okay, fine, I'm here because I ran them over. But I was, you keep saying to save my life, to save your lives. Four of us were in the car. You seem to be forgetting that part. That's, that's true, Francis. Is our life more important than theirs? No, it wasn't. Yeah. But, well, there you go then. I had to Vic, you had Vicky in the car too. They were doomed, regardless whether it was us that we probably put them out of their misery, saved them hours of suffering. Maybe. I just don't think we should be judging anyone based on our past. Some things we just couldn't help. I spit on the ground, and then I look a little concerned to Dad. Wait, uh... Vicky, yeah. She's not here, is she? she? She managed to get away from it all, maybe? I hope so. I don't know. I'm doubting it. I see. You guys were at the the hospital? Yeah. Is that the last you remember? Yeah. We left it not too long ago. There's dead bodies everywhere. All the time as you're talking with Dan, you, you notice that his... It's almost uh, caressing his revolver, a shiny piece of weaponry. So, Dan, what did you do? Hey, out of interest. <laughs> you seemed all right. Have, have you killed people? Is that why you're here? Um, no. No murder in my book. And what did you do? What do you mean, what did I do? Why are you here? <laughs> I think I pissed somebody off, is what I think. Yeah. I mean, it's hell. Like, apparently hell is completely fucking dysfunctional, but we've had the briefing from the crazy old lady who eats her kids. Oh, wait, no, sorry. It's other people's kids. She, she, she killed her kid, and then she eats other people. <laughs> Francis, I want you to roll a fortitude into your injury. Oh, God. I want to peek out the window and see if there's any of those creatures still roaming around. The streets are completely empty now, and the, you don't hear the sound anymore. Francis, you're not injured or anything, but you can stop yourself. You're, you're so sick that you're throwing up. Yeah, Francis will run to like a bathroom or something and puke into the toilet. Jesus, what happened to him? Are you all right? Yeah, I just ate some of the meat. You guys stopped for dinner? Yeah. Or rather, he did. It's, uh, you know, it's hell. It's the, they, they say you can't die here, so uh, the only way to really actually even die a little is if people eat you. So it happens, I guess. Yeah, my God. And of course, Francis decided to sit down and eat. Yeah. When he gets done puking, I think we have to go back to the hospital. Why? I think that might be where the doorway is. Doorway? What? You think we can? We're, de we're dead, Dan. I, d I don't think we. C you, it works you're, like that. You're not dead, Francis. Worst case, you're probably in a tank with a slug on your face. That's not worst case. I'd prefer to be dead. Oh, wait, wait. So you're saying you you did? Because I, I I don't know. Wait, you you they put you in a tank. You also are in a hospital, and you're there for some reason, and people put you in a tank with slug on your face. Is that what you're saying, Dan? Well, I was, I, I, I was there. I don't know if I got the slug or not. It's a bit fuzzy, and I've been, uh, yes, a few places since then. You remember Edward uh, removing the slug, uh, a slug from your face in his cellar, then before he opened the portal. 
Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, I had the slugs on my face. Wait, okay, hang on. In one memory, I have the memory that's not New Jersey. Okay, because uh, I, I, I don't know, I thought it was a dream, but there was the one where we were in a city and I ran people over by mistake and then we got to a house, my friend, <laughs> my right. friend. And and then, then you and Vicky were gone and then that's where, I mean, and then me and Francis just ran around I think horrible things happen to us, you know? What happened to you? Yeah, a bunch of the same stuff. Roaming around the uh, uh, woods of Sweden, and uh, we got trapped in a house, and we had to um, make some sacrifices to get out. Huh. Okay. Yeah, sure. I had to do that. I, I, I smashed it in Francis' hand. He smashed it in my shoulder. It was really great fun. <laughs> If you could say that. Uh, okay. Oh, God. I think I'm about done. Good. Well, you know what, Dan? You know what, actually? If you think there's a way, let, let's do it. Let's go. I mean, I, I was going to call the, the angel. Apparently, you shouldn't say that too many times at once, or it will come and get you. But uh, <laughs> it's fucking matter. Like, this is death anyway. So what does it matter if, I, if the uh, guardian? Did you see the guardian, Dan? Big guy with hooks for hands, and he has hounds. Great fucking fella. More like people. That's gross. Yeah, none of that sounds very good at all. And you saw that after you left the hospital, outside on the street. Oh, yeah. Uh, everywhere's Not a too far, ruin. Yeah. You've been living here for, haven't you? Didn't you say? Yeah, I haven't gone outside the house. Oh. What did you do when you were here? How'd you survive? What did you eat? I don't, I don't, I don't really know, Francis. It's kind of been a bit of a blur tossed around here or there. We need to go I think we need to go back to the hospital. I think uh, I think there's a door there. A doorway. We might be able to get back. Alright. I need to visit my house though. Your house? Yeah. You think it's near here? Yeah, I think uh, so. It's actually uh, down the street uh, two blocks away. Not too far at all. Why do, why do we need to visit your house? The, the, the whole point of that was because there was nothing to do. Now, now Dan's here with something. I mean, although I hope it's not the mirror, Dan, because the mirror, I, I broke that. It doesn't do anything. It's just a mirror. You broke a mirror? Yeah, but I could walk through it. You know, I thought maybe, you know, everything yeah. around here is so fucking trippy, but no, it was just a mirror. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, that's a good one, Oliver. It sounds like something I would have done. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning I'm learning patience. How could you be patient, Dan? <laughs> It's patience or madness dealing with Francis. What? Did you did you, did it's a you joke, know? Francis, I'm joking. Okay, fine. Dan, did you did you know about him? I remember when I first met you guys, you were a bit off with him. Did, did, did you know what he's done already? I don't know the specifics of what he's done, but we've run into uh some people from his past, so I have a I have a sense about it, but it's just a guess. Okay, I see. Francis, I want you to roll see through the illusion soul. Yeah. Eleven. You feel drawn to the living room table. And uh, when you get close to it, you see a wooden mask on the table. You recognize it. This is Sarah's, right? So he picks up the mask. Yeah, Dan, he picks up your dream mask. No, that's not Sarah's mask. That's that's mine. What is it for? It's for um it's really sort of like this ancient acupuncture thing. See it's got a little needle here. here let me take that. Just here, put that back on the table there. There's a little bunch of little needles on the inside. It's not very pleasant really, but I don't recommend it. It's you know, it's mystical. An artifact. <laughs> Oh right! Is it is it like the film, the movie, The Mask? And you put it on, and again, I I believe you. I believe everything now because I'm in hell. So you know, sure, mystical. What does it do? G- gives you powers? No, I just wouldn't recommend putting it on. It it'll make you bleed. Oh, of course, we're in hell. Why not? Um, fuck. All right. Again, Francis, why do we need to go to your house now? Like, what what's actually important? I, I think something might be there. I just need to go. I have a feeling. <sighs> Next to the mask on the table, Francis, you also see a notebook. It's open. And And what is this? The first line there says, dream walking with a mask. Then it's nothing more. 
as if someone started to write but didn't come up with anything more than the title. Francis will thumb through it and pick up the mask again and I guess we're taking this with us. Where did you get these, Dan? I will take that with us and I'm going to take them from him. They spoke about you, the dreamer. Who spoke about who? Dr. Hall. Someone called Anton. Someone called Edward. I don't know. They're all horrible people with veins and Sometimes one other one person's wearing a doctor suit. Sometimes the other is. It's all indistinguishable to me. Well, Francis and Atoll is said the Dreamwalker killed Sarah. I didn't kill Sarah. It was you. As he points at Dan, the realization of it coming up into his head. What? Yeah. Sarah was already dead. All I did was put her out of her misery. Wait, wait, what? In the cabin. In the basement. She, she was like nailed to the wall, man. Doesn't matter. Oh, what do you mean it might, doesn't matter? She might be at my house then. Might be able to still save her. Uh, do you think she was unlucky enough to end up here? Yes. I think anyone associated with us is unlucky enough to find their place here. Well, that's Wait. fucking terrible. Wait, hang on, Francis. You admitted you said you would killed her yourself. Or something. I... So much has happened. I can barely contain it in my head. How am I supposed to know what's reality? What was a dream? What was... <sighs> Oliver, I want you to roll a, a reason roll for a memory check. Certainly. I got a 12. A 12. Oliver, you remember uh, Anatoly said uh, he answered uh, Dr. Hall when Dr. Hall asked, did the dream walker really kill Sarah? And Anatoly sighed and looked at Francis and said, Yes, she was too damaged. I had him crack her head open with an axe. It took him three, three or four swings before she died. He's bloodthirsty, but he lacks finesse. He got the job done, though. Wait, I... You know what, Dad? I don't even know who this poor kid was. She's a kid, right? She was a kid. Or a teenager? Or my age, at least? I don't know. I don't know what makes it worse, to be perfectly honest with you. I think she was about your age. Right. That doesn't make it any fucking better. No, it doesn't. Not really. Fuck. Okay. Wait. So, what even better? though you took advantage... Well, Dad, I, I, I totally fought Francis. He said he took advantage of her, and he didn't say how old she was, and then he said he thought he killed her. You, you put the dots together. I don't know, but apparently someone did say you were... Oh, I don't even know who the fucking this person even is. What'd you do to her, Francis? We we just liked each other, okay? I just... Gosh, we were both lonely. I didn't do anything that we both didn't want. Was she my age? I'm 23, by the way. At least I was. Before I died, or not, whatever. Maybe a little younger. I narrowed my eyes. How much? Come on, man. Get, get, help me out here to at least make you light, less bad like. Because I was thinking we were talking like a fucking kid, okay? No. I, I don't need the judgment from... I don't I don't need your justification. Your... Oh, there's no justification. Just fuck it. Fine. Well, hey, apparently you didn't kill her. He killed her. Or, or maybe hell killed her. I don't even know. All right, fine. You know what? You're right. You're right. It, it doesn't... Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, fine. Whatever. You think she's going to be at your house? <laughs> yes. You know what? Fine, let's go. Let's go. I don't care. Let's just fucking go. She can answer. There you go. She can reveal everything. I like that idea. Let's do it. All this talking about the Sarah makes you wonder about Vicky. Where is she at? If she's here as well, maybe she's in her apartment. Yeah, so Francis will head out and try to find his house. There. The camera fades out and up. It flies over the rooftops of this dark city. Fires that never cease can be seen all around. Scorching buildings that will never burn down. The streets are silent. The night is over. And if there was a dawn, it would be now. A shadow crouches on top of a building, looking down into a bedroom window on the other side of the street. There's no light in there, but he sees every detail clearly. By his feet, 
A victim tries to crawl away. They never die here. Even after he have sucked them dry. No blood left, but still. The heart tries to pump. They are in such pain and torment after he feed on them. He look down and throw the young men over the edge of the roof. A dull thud is heard as the body hit the ground seven stories down. The boy will never die. Not even now. He will never heal. A broken bloodless body still alive in agony until the others eat him. The shadow look back into the window again. The young woman in the bedroom wakes up and slowly rise. Blood, she whisper with such lust. The man on the roof smile and says, Vicky. Thank you for listening to Cult the Experiment, an actual play podcast of the horror role-playing game Cult Divinity Lost. This podcast was written by the Game Master, Peter Samuelson, from TTRP Theater and produced by TTRP Theater. A very special thank you to our cast for this episode. Mitchell Wallace from Helmgast and Penny for a Tale as Francis. Craig Austin from Red Moon Roleplay as Oliver. And Curtis Wilkins from TTRP Theater as Dan. Cult Divinity Lost is developed and published by Helmgast. Visit cultdivinitylost.com to start your own game today. Music in this episode is thanks to Coag and can be found on YouTube. Search COAG. You can find all our productions at ttrptheater.com. If you enjoyed this podcast or our other productions and would like to support our work, please visit our Patreon page or subscribe to our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash cultdivinitylost. Please don't forget to rate and review this episode on your favorite podcast outlet. Thanks again from the cast and crew of Cult the Experiment and all of us at TTRP Theater. Be kind to each other. Save the dark stuff for your cult games.